Thank you very much. Um, today, the G20 finance minister and central bank governors uh, met uh, for the first time under the Italian presidency. And together with uh, Governor Visco, I had the honor of uh, chairing uh, this meeting and hosting uh, what I think is a very productive uh, exchange of views. Uh, now I'll try to give you a brief uh, overview of uh, the discussion that we had uh, in, in the first session, which I chair, then Governor Wisco will tell you about the second session, which he chaired. Uh, in the first session, we focused on the global economy and uh, on the policy actions uh, which are required to, for achieving a robust uh, and equitable uh, recovery. Uh, since the outbreak of uh, the pandemic uh, uh, crisis, uh, uh, G20 finance ministries and central banks uh, have uh, uh, undertaken unprecedented efforts uh, to come to grips uh, with the health, the economic, uh, and the social impact of the pandemic. And now, despite uh, the availability of uh, safe vaccines uh, and uh, the, also the expected strengthening of economic uh, activity over the next quarters, uh, health and economic conditions uh, uh, remain uh, challenging. Therefore, we need to uh, monitor the situation and in case to step up our joint efforts to address uh, this uh, uh, difficult uh, situation. Against this uh, mixed uh, background, ministers and governors today reaffirmed that they commitment to scaling up uh, international coordination to tackle current global uh, challenges. And today we focused uh, on a number of uh, core uh, priorities. First point is that uh, the recovery is, economic recovery is still uh, uh, fragile and is still uneven across countries. And in this context, ministers and governors uh, concurred uh, on the importance to further strengthening policy cooperation in order to put the uh, global economy on a path of uh, stable and sustainable uh, growth. Uh, I think one word uh, which was frequently quoted today is uh, multilateralism. Uh, this is, uh, multilateralism is uh, more important than ever and needs uh, to be enhanced uh, by closer coordination among G20 members. Uh, in the current uh, health and economic context, it is essential to remain vigilant and to learn from previous uh, crises. Uh, any premature withdrawal of uh, fiscal and monetary policies should be, in this context, avoided. Um, a core priority, again in this context, is that of granting equitable access to safe vaccines, but also to diagnostic and therapeutics. We will not get out of, of this uh, crisis. We will not get back to a normal situation until the virus is eradicated in all countries. For this reason, ministers and governors agreed on the need to push for a bold and global response aimed at curbing the virus diffusion everywhere, also by addressing the financing gap of the access to COVID-19 tool, the so-called ACTA. We also welcome the establishment of a G20 high-level independent uh, panel. Um, this panel is, uh, is working uh, on uh, how to get uh, prepared from a financial point of view to tackle future uh, pandemics. So the objective of the panel is to identify and devise solutions which uh, will fill the gap, uh, gaps uh, in the financing of pandemic prevention, uh, surveillance, preparedness, and response. The panel ensures broad regional and gender composition and comprises uh, a number of eminent individuals from the health, financial, and philanthropic sectors. 
and uh, its work will complement uh, the work of other uh, groups focusing more on the health uh, side, and they will prepare a report for uh, the July meeting of uh, uh, ministers and governors. Today's challenges should not uh, divert our attention from the importance of developing a shared vision of uh, what will be the post-COVID world. The next review of the G20 Action Plan will be a good occasion to reflect on this. The Action Plan, which was started under the Saudi presidency last year, is meant to be a living document and we are committed to updating it uh, in order to capture evolving health and economic circumstances. Our next meeting uh, in April will be the right moment to address uh, the new challenges together with the, the pre-existing challenges, uh, such as those of low productivity growth, rising inequality, and the infrastructure uh, financing uh, gap. Uh, during the meeting, someone mentioned the fact that we should move ahead on a two-track approach, uh, focusing on current uh, uh, pressing challenges, but also looking beyond uh, and uh, uh, focusing uh, to the challenges which will be important in the coming uh, years. Ministers and governors discussed how the recovery strategy can represent an opportunity to shape a more sustainable development model. This includes promoting the transition towards a greener, more inclusive, and a more equitable uh, societies. So uh, ministers and governors, uh, we think they can play a crucial role on this, uh, and they should uh, lead the way. In today's discussion, we explored uh, how to address uh, climate-related challenges. Uh, and uh, uh, the G20 dialogue on climate change uh, will continue in our April and July uh, meeting. And uh, um, <laughs> In the, July meeting, in the July meeting that uh, we would like to organize in, in person in Venice, uh, we will hold uh, two important events uh, related to environmental sustainability. We will have uh, a high-level tax symposium on one side, and then we will host a climate conference. These initiatives will bring together policymakers, uh, international financial institutions, and eminent representatives, both from the academia and the private financial sector. Uh, ministers and governors also reaffirmed their support to the most vulnerable countries, especially those facing unsustainable debt burdens. We know that uh, the pandemic uh, is uh, hitting weaker economies more severely, and uh, this risk uh, uh, jeopardizing development prospects, especially uh, in African countries. Uh, today, uh, three African countries contributed to the discussion in the first uh, session. And uh, for this reason, we agree that additional tools should be explored to meet uh, uh, their long-term financing uh, needs. And this should be done at a global scale in close cooperation with uh, the international financial institutions. In the near future, the effective implementation of the G20 Common Framework on debt treatment and the debt service suspension initiative are two key milestones uh, to support countries uh, under particular distress, and they will be discussed further in the next ministerial meetings. Uh, ministers and governors also exchange views on how to improve debt uh, uh, transparency. I think one of the key messages emerging from today's discussion is uh, uh, that uh, the pandemic has uh, widened uh, inequality both across and, and within uh, countries. 
And that this uh, increase in inequality must be reversed uh, quickly, uh, as quickly as possible by addressing the needs of those who have suffered the most, uh, uh, in particular women, the youth, uh, young people, and low-income uh, workers. Finally, on international taxation, ministers and governors focused uh, on the need to reform the current uh, system. Uh, this has become an urgent uh, task uh, as uh, we are faced uh, with the challenges posed by globalization and also by the digitalization of uh, the economy. In this regard, the G20 will build on the ongoing work with a view to achieving a global consensus-based solution by mid-2021. So, thank you for your attention.